Hello to a short additional video to our lecture topic on terpenoids. And what I want to do here is to elaborate a bit more on the concepts of our carotenoids um, and some of their important derivatives that we didn't touch on in the main lecture material and lecture video. So just to recap, we had mainly talked um, through that lecture about the biosynthesis and function of the different uh, terpenoid subgroups um, covering all from the 10 carbon monoterpenoids to ending on the 40 carbon tetraterpenoids or car carotenoids. Um, and I want to elaborate here a bit more on um, the important sort of branching point that we have at this um, metabolic node where we're using the, the 20 carbon precursor here, general general diphosphate or GGPP, that is a key precursor to our derelin phytohormones as well to all the um, specialized terpenoids with many having defensive functions here that also now needs to be allocated for the production of carotenoids and their important function both in photosynthesis but also again in um, plant environment interactions. So I just want to highlight the, the GGPP substrate here as one of the key um, pathway nodes in terpenoid metabolism where decisions about allocating that precursor between GA growth hormones, specialized terpenoids, and carotenoids have to um, be made. If you're going down committed to the carotenoids, um, as I mentioned in the main lecture, the key enzyme here is the phytoin synthase, which catalyzes this head-to-head -head tail condensation type reaction uh, much like we had discussed for the um, triterpenoids. Similar idea here, only that we're not using the 215 carbon farnesyl diphosphate precursor, but the 20 carbon general general diphosphate precursor. What we end up with in this sort of committed step now down to the carotenoids is this largely non conjugated 40 carbon um, long chain hydrocarbon phytoin. And so that's a key point now for further functional modifications, tailoring reactions to generate the different bioactive carotenoids. So once this decision has been made, we are moving into carotenoid metabolism. What is happening then next is desaturation and isomerization reactions. And those can differ depending on what type of carotenoid we are forming. And so again, up here is your condensation reaction through the phytoin synthase. Um, and then indicated here, we have a number of desaturases and isomerases. What they're essentially doing is that they're generating lycopene here, which is largely now a conjugated enzyme. Conjugated double bonds um, here in this metabolite that will start to help understand their functions in photosynthesis as well as in many of the um, ROS and UV light um, scavenging functions of carotenoids. Um, and so these conjugated double bonds are a key part of these metabolites um, of being able to um, serve in these functions. From this still a little linear compound, we then undergo an, um, possible cyclizations. Again, this is a node in the pathway where we can branch toward different carotenoids. Um, this first major branch here is between delta and beta carotene beta being the major metabolite that we're seeing in the production of um, the major xanthin, anthracentin, and viola xanthin compounds um, that are sort of the major carotenoids that we find in most plant species. But we also see some other compounds here like lutein and so forth that are going through a different um, reaction mechanism that largely differ in the position and the number of the rings in the carotenoids as well as some of the double bond arrangements, ending up in different capacities for providing um, functions in terms of light absorption, as well as, um, for example, UV light protection. So overall, what these molecules now allow in different um, capacities based on their state of conjugation um, across the hydrocarbon molecule as well as the um, ring structure and the hydroxylation sort of function modification of the ring specifically is electron transfer and photosynthesis, um, slight changes in the wavelengths of absorption maxima we can see here based on the structural differences, 
and again, um, stress protection against UV and oxidative stress, especially reactive oxygen species here, but also the um, double bond arrangements and specifically the hydroxylation at um, certain positions give carotenoids a different yellow to red range colors that then play a role as pigments um, for pollinator and seed dispersal attraction. Right? So that's really the biochemical foundation for these different functions. And then when we, when we come to the point actually of carotene, if we go one slide back here, so if we actually go back um, to our especially better carotene intermediate here, this is actually another branching point in this pathway where we now can also produce different kinds of compounds that do fall outside of the carotenoid family, but are derivatives thereof. And specifically here, we're looking at ABBA as one of our hormones, one of our plant hormones as well as strigolactones, who also now are um, clearly seen and accepted as plant hormones, given their different um, physiological roles. And so here, again, there's a branching point where precursor allocation has to be regulated between making different carotenoids, um, specifically coming from beta carotene, or actually going into these lower carbon number derivatives, um, ABA and um, strigolactones. What's interesting though is, is that doing this, we're actually sort of utilizing the same kind of reactions again. Right? We have sort of desaturases and specifically isomerase, isomerases in play here that are converting beta carotene um, in violax antigen again. These are the same enzymes. What we have then here to, for example, go to ABA and similarly so for the strigolactones is that we have dioxygenases that actually can catalyze carbon-carbon cleavages and will cause a breakup in the 40-carbon chain to generate um, bioactive metabolites of shorter chain lengths. So the way this works, for example, for the strigolactones is that, again, here you have your beta-carotene coming out of carotenoid metabolism now. The first thing you do is that you use isomerizations of these double bonds um, from trans to cis arrangement. And so if you remember some of your knowledge from fatty acid metabolism, right, moving double bonds from trans to cis configuration, what it does, it actually introduces this kink, this bending in the structure. And so this bending actually will allow now this um, carotene to become a substrate for different enzymes, and it will also facilitate the carbon-carbon cleavage to some degree in the end. So you're introducing this, you're moving from trans to cis, you're generating this kink in the molecule, and then you have these carotenoid cleavage deoxygenases or CCDs. And what they do is um, use this substrate to catalyze cleavage of carbon-carbon bonds at different position these molecules. You can end up with different metabolites. In the strigolactone biosynthesis, the first thing you do is actually that you cleave off um, a 27 carbon Submolecule of your original carotene here, which is called carotenol. So you generate an aldehyde here as part of the deoxygenase reaction, and you're leaving behind um, a C13 molecule. And then you have further cleavage, so you're actually taking this as the next substrate. You do another carbon carbon cleavage with these deoxygenase reactions here, and you're coming to the central intermediate here in. Um, strigolactone biosynthesis that's called carlactone. Right? So it's a, it's a double reaction here where you have carbon-carbon cleavage and then you're actually closing this ring here. You will have introduced a second carbonyl group in the process and you can close this ring here to a lactone. And so up until this point now, we actually have been in the plastid and now the next step actually is happening in the cytosol because the next step is a cytochrome P450 monooxygenase that will take the carlactone molecule and catalyze further function modifications. And this is actually, depending on what species you look at, this is taken from um, Arvidopsis, I believe, the MAX1. It's a SIP711 um, family P450. And what it does, it's actually catalyzing a sequential oxidation of the carlactone intermediate, starting with hydroxylation, moving that to the aldehyde here, and then in the end, actually, in the step three, catalyzed by the exact same enzyme, a carboxy group here. 
And so this is actually interesting, this P450, because it's very um, reminiscent of P450s um, that we actually see, for example, in gibberellin um, biosynthesis. There are different P450 subfamilies there. Um, they are called the sub 701s 701s, but they also catalyze these carboxylations. We also find them in conifer-specific, gymnosperm-specific P450 families like the sub 720 family they also catalyze these three-step kind of carboxylations. So they're very uh, widely distributed ancestral P450 family that can um, activate molecules through carboxylation in this case. But it's interesting to see that we have this link here between P450s acting in um, gibberellin metabolism, which is using the same original C20 precursor to now find them again here in a different subfamily to use the same kind of reaction to make stribal actons. And then the next step here, there is the number of enzyme steps um, going through actually a broader um, diversity of strigolactones um, across different species where we're actually using this carboxy function here. You would have another oxygenation happening and then you can actually generate this C ring here um, through another lactone formation. And so basically sort of the, the base structure of these strigolactones now is this tricyclic lactone right here that has an additionally fused budin-like group here. And so now you can have multiple different further functional modifications of this base structure, but this one here is actually one of the major strigolactones that has been identified. So it's, it's interesting to think that you're, you're coming out of carotenoids, which are really important by active molecules, and you, you actually move further and you utilize those now as substrates again to form another group of hormones. Earlier, ABA was identified, strigolactones are somewhat newer and more recent discoveries, but you're basically coming back now using specialized metabolites and bringing them back as substrate to produce hormones. Um, strigolactones are certainly not sort of your classical hormones in that sense. They actually have multiple different functions and um, there probably are more that have not yet been identified. Um, some of you um, who work on this are, are very familiar with these functions. Um, the hormone functions are really um, related around, for example, inhibition of bud growth. So there's a lot of crosstalk with cytokinins. Um, they can regulate stomata density and dynamics in crosstalk with ABA. Um, that makes sense given that they're biosynthetically and structurally um, quite related in many ways. Um, they release seed dormancy again in crosstalk with ABA. Um, but a, a major role really of the strigolactones also is below ground in controlling um, root development as well as root environment interactions and, and specifically regulation of secondary root growth. And one of the major roles here of strigolactones um, is the interaction with um, Abioscula mycorrhiza AM fungi um, to enhance water and mineral uptake through these. Um, interactions and strigolactones are a key communication um, metabolite in these interactions. Um, there is also additional evidence for strigolactones having a role in resistance against pathogens um, and not listed here but very important too is that actually parasitic plants um, right, are utilizing these compounds as cues to find their host plants. So they're hijacking this really important defensive and developmental regulator um, to find host plants. So there, there are really multiple functions of strigolactones um, as well as carotenoids and they're linked to each other. So I thought it was worthwhile to add this uh, shorter video to our lecture on terpenoids. Um, they're structurally quite different here, ABA as well as strigolactones, but biosynthetically still close related to their um, origin in terpenoid metabolism.